Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Very nervous, actually. I don't know what to expect. And if I'm sharing too much information, I've never done anything like this before. I've never even had a pap smear. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for rocking with Nurse Rocky. Today is Tuesday and you guys know what that means. It is top 10 Tuesday and I look very casual. I'm sorry y'all, I just came back from vacation. <laughs> like you see this little hula girl, she's still on vacation, but I'm here. And today I wanna bring you guys something a little different. Um, September technically is Sexual Health Awareness Month. Um, I think there's a week specifically that they dedicated it to, but the month in its, uh, the month of September entirely is Sexual Health Awareness Month. So for the next couple weeks, I wanna bring you guys some sexual health videos. I know, we getting a little personal. So get comfortable, brew some tea, grab a snack, and we're gonna talk a little bit about sexual health, specifically about my Paragard IUD experience and incorporating Top 10 Tuesdays, we're gonna talk about the top 10 methods of birth control as well. So here we go. So what is Paragard? Paragard is an intrauterine device, an IUD. It is a flexible plastic, device that's wrapped in copper. So unlike the other IUDs that you may have heard of, like the Mirena and things like that, this Paragard is non-hormonal. So getting into why I chose Paragard, that's exactly why I chose it. It is non-hormonal. I didn't want to incorporate any hormones in my birth control method just because I just didn't want to alter anything. I know for some people they may need hormones to counteract things or balance things. That's not what I wanted to do with my body. And so that was the choice that I made for myself. Um, I also like the fact that it was more than 99% effective. And because it's hormone free, if I decided to get pregnant, I could take it out and it would be effective pretty much immediately. And so I really appreciated that fact over the others that like, over the hormonal ones, you kind of had to time it and plan it to the point where you had to stop the birth control a certain amount of months beforehand and blah, 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 things have to re-regulate, stuff like that. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to deal with that. This is good for up to 10 years. That's also a perk for me. <laughs> I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to be bothered. I don't want to have to miss a date and like be worried like, oh, I can't get in to see the OBGYN every three months or I can't I can't stay on top of this. Definitely not the pill for me because boy, I can't even take my multivitamins every day. <laughs> so that ain't gonna work. Um, and other methods that I'll talk about a little bit later, I just felt like the Paragard was perfect for me. Now, we're gonna go into the insertion process because I know a lot of you guys are wondering like, what was that like? Did it hurt? Was it worth it? Okay. So when I went to, when I scheduled my appointment for this Paragard insertion, I looked up, of course, on YouTube and, and tried to figure out everyone's opinion, like everyone's experience and things like that. And of course, you're going to get a lot of bad and good experiences on YouTube. No one person's experience is going to be the exact same. But a lot of people I heard took ibuprofen 30 minutes before the appointment. And I was just like, you know, I'm not going to do that. I don't really like taking pills, even on my period. So I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I want to go into this, I want to have a raw experience, see what it's like, boom. So I get there, everything's fine. The OBGYN, she's amazing, she's great, she explains everything. And she starts using things like labor intensive and, you know, it's going to be very uncomfortable. And I mean, she starts, she starts really kind of making me nervous. All she did was step out of the room, allow me to get undressed from the waist down. Um, I kind of got a peek of some of the tools that she was using. And she came back in and it was, it was go time, y'all. So a little bit more about me. <laughs> I had not even had a pap smear at this point. I'm, this is a real moment for all you nosy Nancys. I'm about to let you in on my life story, okay? So... I was a virgin like at the time of this insertion like I was getting this birth control before like the month before I got married um, so it was a whole new experience for Queen V you know what I'm saying and so 
Um, she used a little stylet like they use for pap smears and things like that. Opened everything up and she starts poking and prodding, measuring my cervix, something like that. And you start to feel those cramps coming in. You know, it's just like, whoo, okay. Um, but everything, to be honest, was very quick. It was a very quick procedure. Um, like I said, my OBGYN was on point. The only thing that I, I, I would recommend taking ibuprofen just because it's not like period cramps. It's like period cramps on steroids. Just because she's in there with the tool, just like, just, <laughs> just bothering the mess out of your cervix. Stimulating my cervix activated my sympathetic nervous system and just, y'all i was by the end of by the end of the procedure i was like okay i made it it wasn't terrible but i made it and she was like you know you need to get up slowly because you know we just did all of that and you might feel lightheaded and dizzy and um you know some some of our people pass out and blah 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 and i was like i'm fine i just need to use the bathroom y'all I got out of that bathroom, flushed the toilet, looked at the mirror. Your girl was gray, sweaty, flushed. I was like, I need to sit down. Y'all got some graham crackers, some ice. Like, I need some look. <laughs> I was struggling at the end. Um, and so I, I would definitely recommend, definitely, definitely, definitely recommend um, taking ibuprofen beforehand because it does affect everything. You're, you're stirring up some stuff and it'll have you looking crazy it'll have you bent okay it will have you bent and so that's the only thing i would recommend other than that it's not terrible and if you've had pap smears before if you've um you know had things like that if you've had children like some of these things may be a little bit more familiar for you but like i said this was my first time with anything dealing with dealing with any kind of poking and prodding down there and so yeah it was an experience but like i said it was not long at all i want to say because like i think i timed it it was probably like 15 to 20 minutes like it wasn't long it just kind of felt long because i was nervous i wish i would have recorded everything i recorded like bits and pieces but i wish i would have recorded everything i was just really anxious and like nervous so we just went in with it so did it hurt yeah it was uncomfortable but it was an unbearable pain like there was no i didn't scream or it was just kind of like i wish i had a stress ball you know like there were moments where you wanted to clench your booty cheeks but it wasn't like unbearable pain for me that's my pain threshold after the insertion how did things change for me for me um my first month's period after that was on time it was longer and stronger so usually beforehand my periods were about four days and um they were bearable for me they were out you know i didn't really like taking like i said before i didn't like taking ibuprofen or any medication beforehand y'all after the paraguard it was about seven or eight days and I was taking ibuprofen for like the first two days, <laughs> laid over, um, heating pad. I mean, the whole nine, like it was just longer and stronger for sure. Um, also within the first few months, it is normal for you to be spotting a while. And I was nervous because, um, like I said, I got this inserted like a month before my wedding and honeymoon. So I was just like, y'all, I was praying. <laughs> Your girl was at the altar praying that you know everything was smooth and that everything came on time and didn't interfere with with my you know my honeymoon everything came on time thankfully praise god it did not like i did not spot the first month um but after that after we incorporated sex and things in there it's just like my body was like okay you threw one thing at me and now you throw on another so the second and third month, I was definitely spotting. I was definitely spotting a bit more. Um, but like I said, it was nothing that I couldn't handle. Um, had some light period panties or some panty liners and we just keep it pushing. Like, yes, it is kind of annoying, um, but it dies down over time. And for me, it was just like, it was something that I just kind of like chalked up to the game. It was something 
that came with it. They do recommend that you check, that you do monthly checkups yourself, kind of like getting all up in there and checking for strings. So when they place the little, it's a really little device. It's like one and a half inch by one and a half inch, but it has strings attached. The strings help obviously for removal of the device, but also to ensure that it stays in the right place. So you're supposed to go up in there, kind of feel around your cervix to see if you feel like some strings are supposed to feel like fishing wire and whatever, whatever. Um, sometimes you can't feel them or they may get misplaced. They, they recommend that you go to your gynecologist regularly just to make sure, and if, especially if you can't find it, if you're abnormally bleeding, pelvic pain, things like that, to go to your gynecologist. Like these are obvious things. Like if you feel something's wrong, definitely get that checked out. But as of now, I am absolutely loving my Paragard. My copper IUD is very effective for me. It is the best choice that I think I could have made for myself. However, I, in top 10 Tuesday fashion, I'm gonna go over 10 of the top methods for birth control. These are just informative um, for you, just giving you guys kind of like a baseline of where to start. If you're looking for a birth control method for yourself, whether you are um, not sexually active and are planning to be so, or if you just currently have a birth control method that you're not feeling and you wanna switch to something else, these are just some ideas to um, kind of guide your search into whatever you think might work best for you. So let's get into the top 10. Number one, obviously, is the IUD. It's an intrauterine device, small, tiny device that's inserted into your uterus um, and either releases hormones or, like in my case, doesn't. These methods are more than 99% effective. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Number two, condoms. You guys are familiar with these. A thin covering made of latex or lambskin that covers the male penis. These are about 90% effective. The third method is a shot, commonly the Depo-Provera shot. You can either get it in your arm or in your booty. It's a man-made hormone similar to progesterone and you have to get it every three months. That's how long it's good for, but to get the best protection, you need to get it every three months. And this method is like 95% effective. Number four is implants like Nexplanon, and these are similar to IUDs um, in the sense that something is being inserted into your body that stays there. Um, so this goes under your skin, releases a hormone. It's good for up to three years, and it also is about 99% effective. Number five, the pill. This one isn't my favorite, but it is a common option. So pills that contain hormones to alter your natural cycle of hormones to prevent pregnancy. And they are about 91% effective. So these are daily pills that you have to take, daily. Number six is the birth control patch. Um, I don't know how popular this is these days, but it is an option. Um, it's almost, I mean, it's a small square patch, a dermal patch that goes on your skin almost like a nicotine patch. You replace it every week and it is about 90% effective. Number seven, <laughs> the pullout method. Now, too many people use this method. Uh, and I'm not gonna get too much into this because to each his own. Now, I'm not gonna ask how many kids y'all have, but to each his own. <laughs> Whew, okay. Um, the pull-out method is simple. It's when the male pulls his penis out of the vagina before he ejaculates. And um, good luck because you're counting on the man for this one. And um, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing to risk it all. I don't know if I'm willing to risk it all like that. So um, good luck. Number eight is the basal body temperature method. With the basal body temperature method, you are monitoring your temperature every morning before you get out of bed, and you're really just monitoring your infertile and fertile stages and just trying to avoid having sex during your fertile stages if you don't want to get pregnant and having tons of sex during your fertile stages if you want to. <laughs> your body temperature rises around ovulation and um, about halfway through your menstrual cycle. So you can kind of track that trend and really understand what your body's doing and um, 
when to do it. The ninth method is the calendar method, which is similar to basal body temperature, where you're just tracking your ovulation via like a calendar app. And there's plenty of those in the app store. I can list some of my favorite ones down below. This is also around 75% effective. The last method that I wanna talk about is the vaginal ring, like the Nuva ring. It's a small, flexible piece of plastic that is inserted into your vagina that releases a hormone and it's good for a month. So you change it every month and this is about 91% effective. Okay, so these are the top 10 birth control methods. Hopefully this gives you a good place to start if you're looking for a new birth control method. Um, if you've used any of these before, like I said, let me know down below. Let's get a little dialogue going. Um, I really wanna know what you guys have tried, um, what's not working for you, what's working. And by writing down your experience in the comments below, you might help somebody else who's searching for a birth control method for themselves. So if you're considering Paragard for yourself and you have any more questions, something that I didn't cover in the previous section of this video, let me know down below. Hopefully I can answer those questions. Thanks again for rocking with Nurse Rocky. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't and I will see you guys in my next video.